Well, welcome back. Uh, it is week two, lecture two, covering chapter five. Uh, and this chapter is on missiological principles uh, in our strategy development, um, defining some terms and really focusing in. There's a lot of missionaries out there. There's a lot of mission organizations out there and all, all doing good work, perhaps, but not necessarily everybody is there for the same purpose. For example, you might have a Christian mission organization that is more focused on community development. Uh, there might be another organization more focused on church planting. Uh, and so both there, both fulfilling purposes of God, uh, but, not exact, but not doing the same work, uh, not competing with each other either by any means, but maybe speaking some different language in terms of uh, missions and missiological principles. So the angle that we come from in this book, uh, as you can imagine, uh, is we want, we want to discuss the missiological principles that have the most to do with God's redemptive plan for the whole world, making disciples of all the nations. What are the principles that are going to see those disciples multiply around the world amongst all the people groups? And so the first one is need and receptivity. And essentially in the need and receptivity, uh, all people need the gospel. All have fallen short, uh, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The gospel is meant for all people. But in different fields, uh, there, there's different degrees of receptivity, uh, different degrees of openness. And so we have to look at the need. Uh, where are the unreached people groups? Who are the unreached people groups? But also, who is responding right now to the gospel? And while we're not going to deny the gospel to just uh, to, to, to some people, we want, we want them all to have the gospel, where are we going to focus our current resources? And this is a tension uh, that missionaries and mission organizations uh, have faced. Uh, I, mean, I can remember with the International Mission Board overseas, these were questions being asked at different points in time. We only have limited resources, limited missionaries. Where do we send them? Do we send them to the more traditional fields where there's more established churches or the unreached people groups? If we're low on budget, where do we put that money? So determining that need and receptivity and the existing God concept, perhaps, that we saw uh, in, uh, in the early 90s when, uh, when Dr. Blackie had that study come out. Hey, where is God working right now? And I'm going to go get involved there. And definitely a good, uh, a good missiological principle. Evangelism. There's a lot of good mission work out there. We've been involved in very good community development work. Uh, we did sports work for a long time in a very unreached country. And it was sports development with the government. Um, but that wasn't the end. That was not the end of what we did. We were there to evangelize the people of that country. So our strategy, while it included having platforms of sports development, it got to evangelism and church planting. Uh, any good evangelical, missiological, uh, uh, missionary strategy must be about evangelism. It is evangelism that is going to lead to new churches. Social networks. Principle. Hey, the gospel is going to travel faster through existing social networks, family networks. So there's this mythological principle. Uh, think about it in the Bible, in the book of Acts, perhaps. Uh, there were many times a, an individual man might come to Peter, for example, and say, Hey, come, come preach to my family. And he would gather his family in his house. Uh, our strategies need to, need, to, need to be very focused on the social networks. It might be students, university students, university campuses, family networks, uh, professional networks. Uh, contextualization. Um, we've, we've talked a lot about this over the last even couple of courses, but just as relevant uh, to keep talking about it. Contextualization, it's a hot topic right now in the United States among pastors and churches. Contextualization does not, being, does not mean being cool or being, uh, being uh, I don't know, masking the gospel of sorts so that people might receive it. It's not a watering down, and that, that's an argument that contextualization waters down the gospel. Uh, not true. Contextualization would say, uh, who are these people? What do they believe? What are current practices, either religiously or culturally or familially even, what are current practices there? Uh, what is the language? 
And then we want to take the gospel, we want to take off all of our Western wrapping, all of, all of those traditions that we've added to uh, our church in the gospel message. We're going to shuck all that away and take the essential gospel message. We're going to plant it right there in the mission field amongst the context. And we're going to rewrap it, perhaps. We're going to rewrap it in, uh, in that local culture's wrapping. That's contextualization. Reproducibility. Our evangelism, our, our discipleship, our church planting, the multiplication of leaders all must be reproducible. Big tension between, uh, say, the American church and our practices and then going overseas. We want to go and we want to, do, we want to plant, we want to produce in that foreign country what we do back home. This was a very common practice back in the mid-1900s. I had several discussions even this week about it. How you can walk into the jungles or villages of some of the remote, most remote places in the world. But missionaries that got there in the mid-1900s uh, built little American churches perhaps. That's not reproducible. We want, we, want to, we want our evangelism methods to be reproducible by the locals. We want the discipleship processes methods to be reproducible by the locals. We want our church planting to be reproducible by the locals. Uh, and leadership development to be reproducible by the locals. And so as we form strategy, as we craft strategy, we have to think this way. Contextually and then reproducibility. Everything I do must be simple enough to be reproduced by the people with whom uh, I am working. I'm not, I'm not dragging in my American culture and them having to work through that. We want, we want them to be able to reproduce in their context their way. And development of local leadership, uh, just mentioned a little bit, and here we are. It is so essential to develop local leadership as we go through this process. In other words... Everything cannot depend upon the missionary. If it's a very unreached place, no gospel witness, the missionary comes into that place, establishes the work, begins the work, but immediately must be thinking local leadership, local leadership, raising up people within the local culture that are going to lead the movement forward. How important this would be uh, in a country where maybe there's political instability, uh, a hatred of the West, and uh, the missionaries at any time could be kicked out of the country. And if all the work is dependent upon the missionaries, can the work continue? If we are immediately developing local leadership from the beginning, the work does not depend upon the missionaries solely. Not to say that missionaries don't, ha always, have a, uh, don't always have a place in the work, I mean, I believe from the very beginnings all the way through the most mature, there's a place for missionaries on the field in, in, in those contexts. But we've got to be thinking local leadership, which kind of leads to, to the last one here, phasing out. We used to talk about working ourselves out of a job. I want my strategy to be developed and implemented in such a way that there will be a day that I don't need to be here, that I don't have to be here, that yes... There is local leadership in place, doing the work. It's reproducible. It's in that context. The gospel is going. Churches are being planted, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I can phase out. So when we begin our strategy, when we begin our work with the end in mind, the end is me not having to be here. So I need, how can I establish my work so that it doesn't depend upon me and I can actually either be kicked out of the country and not have to do it, or I've actually worked myself out of a job. Very quickly, that's chapter 5 and the missiological principles uh, there. See you on the discussion board. We can follow up with some of these uh, and have a great week.